and welcome to part two of the Tam and Gemma show. <laughs> I hope you caught up with last week's and this is the second part of their interview. Very it's really nice interesting now. that you both talk quite openly about um, acting and how tough it is. What what advice would you give to like a, a 14, 15 year old girl starting out in the industry now? What what would you say was important? Don't have sun beds, don't drink, and definitely don't smoke. Because <laughs> <laughs> it does terrible things to your skin. Uh, no, I would say the best advice I would give was the advice that my mum gave to me that literally made me, which is you you, you have to take the knockbacks with a pinch of salt. You cannot, you can't get offended or feel personally sad if you don't get a job because if you feel like that you'll 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 never get anywhere you you have to see yourself I am a business you know I am tomorrow will limited if you like you know I am the company I am the business and you have to see it like that because if you don't you you you'll get nowhere you also have to see that it's that you're not in control of that business all the time that somebody's in control of it for you and that's what I find like you know I did like anti-bullying campaigns growing up like through my teenage years and my early 20s because being in EastEnders at a young age I was quite, I was bullied quite a lot even though I've had like really great like, great friends since I was nine I've still got now it's just it's because you're different and yeah you, affects so much of you and actually it's telling like people that it's okay if you are if you don't get the job no but if you don't get that job you know and also it's just doing things that it like wanting to do acting because it's for 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 what you love so if it's amateur for if it's this it's not about being famous and unfortunately like being famous is something that's become a fad and that's what is you what oh don't even start me on that one but it's not even, I don't even want to start because I think if I start, then it's going to go too far. But I think that's what I mean is in like for me being young, I feel people, for, sorry for people that are 18 and get into Hollyoaks or any kind of soap, have it for two years and think that probably treat a lot of people like, like absolute, you know, C-U-N-T's. I can't, I can't think of any other word, but treat people like, you know, treat people badly and then are actually really nice people deep down. And it's only when they realise that it's all gets stripped from them that they don't, they're not who they really wanted to be. Do you see what yeah, I mean? Exactly, yeah, like they exactly. play the part of being an actor almost. Yeah. They play what they think an actor is or what a celebrity, I suppose, nowadays is. And yeah, I think, for I me, think you have to forget that it's not about being famous or being a celebrity. It's doing a job that you love, that you desperately want to do since you were three years old. And when you get it, it amazes me still that you have younger people that come into Hollyoaks oh and are like... Oh look, here, here's my here's my fiance again. <laughs> Can you send him here, please? Because my drink's empty. Yes, yeah, so is mine. <laughs> and so is mine's as well. Thank you so much, baby. Look at that. Don't tell him. You I'm have naked. got him well trained. He just said, "Don't tell me, don't tell him I'm naked." <laughs> well, I, did, I you guys didn't hear it, but I I put the wood at the door, and I just had Vienna knocking at the door, and like I could hear her, so I just text Christian in capital letters six times: Vienna, 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 Vienna. <laughs> Oh, okay. Can oh, no. we please just for a millisecond discuss your children, Gemma? Have you have you have you had a spy at my Instagram or anything, Kelly? Have you seen my girl? Yeah, your girls are hilarious. Li- li- and I mean, beautiful in the same I mixture. I cannot even tell you those children entertain me on a daily basis. <laughs> li- they are something else. Like, Filming like the you, and I don't know you all too well, Gemma, but from your Instagram, they feel like they are you. They know their own minds. Those two girls, they are strong, independent. Don't mess with them, girls. I know, but a bit too much. I want that. No, like, you but... say that as their mother. Well, you want that? I've got, I've got a five-year-old girl, and I've said this before on the show. She's, she is something else. So I said to her the other day, "Oh, you're a princess," and she went, "I am not a princess. Oh. I'm a warrior." Oh like, yes. Ah. But on, on our second show, so the first show went out live, and the second show we decided we'll pre-record, and it is a good job we did. So it was Gemma and Alex's show, and Matilda came in about four or five times, completely naked, but like covering. Her little, her little chest, okay, like this. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, like this. So poor Mike had to see Matilda <laughs> walking in. Like my husband's asleep downstairs. There's the cat again. My husband's asleep downstairs, and Matilda's just wandering in. But I think going on to children, because it's really interesting time that you pick up on that. 
it made me who I am today, actually having my kids. And I feel when I look at your Instagram stuff, it's the same with you, Gemma. I was just about to say before, before like, as soon as we mentioned them, it's for me, but as maybe because I've done the acting since I was young, it's, uh, it's not like saying I've completed everything I want to, but having children suddenly made me feel complete. And I've always strived for that since I was young is in that kind of acceptance. And it's like, for me, it's that I, I wake up every day and I know what my job is. So that's why my kids go to nursery only two mornings a week because I feel they need to. But, but you, but you have, also, you haven't changed. Like that, that's a question I get asked a lot from people at work saying, yeah, yeah. "Oh my God, she's got, she's got two kids now." Like, and I'm like, "She's exactly, exactly the same. It hasn't. You've not kind of." change your personality because you've got like some people have taken my energy as in kind of it can be in a negative way you know sometimes they might think I'm not fake but they might think that I'm a bit loud I'm an attention seeker that's, that's definitely what I've been called a lot through my oh young me too and, um, and I you know I do film my children and I put it on Instagram and but I've never been on social media until the last two years because I felt like I needed something being at home and on my own you do want I'm not apologising for wanting a bit of recognition, but not recognition for for me. It's like, like oh, for what I look like and this filter. And no offence to people that do that. I follow Molly May, and I'm a Love Island obsessed. So you know, oh, I, I, oh, I, I, I'm disgusted in you, Gemma. I'm disgusted in you. I don't know. I just can't help it. I just can't help it. Disgusted. I can't watch it because I'm such a bitter old lady. I know, but I'm just like, I just love it. I like that. I I used to love reality TV. (laughs) So bad. But I love all reality TV because I just, I, I just, I, it's just ridiculous. Do you not watch it and just look at it and going, this is so produced? Yeah. Do you know what? Do you know what put me off reality TV? Genuinely. Um, and I don't, maybe I can't mention actual names, but what put me off is that Lion Pictures, who do Hollyoaks, are also in charge of a reality tv show and so there are award things that we go to or functions that we go to with those reality people and they look at us like we are the shit on their show and because they've got obviously like thousands and thousands of followers and millions and millions of viewers you know and they are obviously are way more famous than us but what's irritating is to have someone that that does nothing basically to look at you like you are like underneath them really, really bugs me because I think I've you trained can. my whole life to do what I do, Missy. So yeah, but don't then look I think like in all industries, and I think you've got some people, you know, like some people that like um, Saffron Barker or whatever. I'm not saying I'm not. I don't watch her stuff, but you know, people that are YouTubers and do this it is just going. I know it sounds silly, but I can't even write an email. I, you know, I've only just learned in like the last year. I'm so dark ages and pencil and paper and. Mm. You like even doing this, the first time I've ever used Skype, I was just like, <laughs> I just it's it's that's not me. But I feel that like not going with the times, but people are there, there's nice people and bad people within. Oh, no, uh, I, t- I don't have a problem with reality bit t- TV. I love it. I, you know, I don't love it, but audience, but I don't have a problem with that. It's brilliant. What I have an issue with is them looking at us like we're beneath them. That's what I have an issue with. We have people within our own same soap that would look like that beneath us. And that's not, I'm not, there's no naming names, but there's in our industry with what we do within everything. I've worked in these centers. I've, we go to these soap awards. I've been in it since I was so so young that some people unfortunately just think they're better and more superior. I think my experience of being on Hollyoaks is Hollyoaks was always the inferior soap to other soaps when I was there. You know, you, I it was, it was, I struggled when I left Hollyoaks, I, I struggled and, and I was, I wasn't a very nice person in that I came out of Hollyoaks game. Well, I'm not one of those Hollyoaks girls who can't act. And, and I look back now and go, I was a wanker actually, because that's really offensive to those yeah, that, girls that, that were beautiful, but could act. Yeah, but and Kelly, there was a, there was a stigma maybe, about you we were, were just beautiful if you were in it. Like you weren't allowed to be in a in a theatre production if you were in Hollyoaks because it was it was you know degrading to the theatre world. And then I've been in however many tours before I had my children because suddenly they need theatre was going down the pan and they wanted people to fill the fucking. Well, they, this, yeah, is, this, is, this is this is where this is where this is where I find it interesting because I can I went I've come from theatre. And I've come from being in theatre where somebody has taken a job that I think I would probably have been better at 
because they were on the telly yeah. and I've gone oh my god that's really frustrating but they put bums on seats because of you know the the publicity and stuff but now I'm in tv there is a massive huge enormous part of me that would love to go back to theatre now and go hi it's me again but I've been in tv now so I can be all the leading roles now but I would love to go and do a, a role and say I deserve to be there, not because I'm on the TV, but yeah. because I actually... You can do played. it. Yeah, exactly. I'd love to do that. Or say, no, I'm, ter- I'm terribly sorry. I'm busy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of loving to do that, surely you can't... The, the, the viewers at home are going to be like, no, don't leave us. Grace is there for a while, surely. Oh, mate, I've told Brian I'm not leaving until I am literally either dead or Holly Oates is not on the telly anymore. Yeah. I said, I li- I want to be, you know, like in my 60s, like, wow, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but it would be great to get you both back together. And I know you're, oh, Emma, mate, Emma, your character's like have, dead. We have had so yeah, many ideas. I've said or something, yeah. Well, you could We've come back from so the dead. Many ideas. It. Let's Let's start a campaign, get you back. Like you could be her alter ego, like her subconscious somehow. We've had we've had dream scenarios. We've had like COVID COVID scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> Where like I'm having a dream and it's like a two person episode because of COVID. Like okay, that would be perfect. I just want to come up for a holiday for like th- two, like three or four weeks and film some episodes and then go home again. Everyone and say, oh, cheers, guys, and then go again. Go, go get that I can get away from my kids. We talked about the twenty mile rule thing. I don't want my children to come with me, so yeah. I don't yeah. want to. You know, I would just love to. It'd be great. Just leave them. With I mean, us. what what would be brilliant, really, is if maybe Grace could have some kind of like breakdown and she needs to go to like a healing place in the Bahamas. There you yeah. go. And hey, while right. she was in the right. Bahamas, she right. dreamt that Claire was there healing her and there was Hold like on. a whole if we, if we said it in, in like Bahamas. Thailand, that's where Zara went. I could be the healer. Yeah, there you go. There there go. go. I've got two kids I could do with healer. two weeks break Oh from. my God, you could be the healer. Yeah, I'm there. Don't know what happens ever again, but if you take me to Thailand for two weeks, I'm up for it. Right, this is story time now, this chat. (laughs) Brilliant. Let's just call Brian now, set it up and get it done with. (laughs) I'm completely in love with this idea. It's absolutely brilliant, but I do need to lose about four stone if I'm going to put a bikini on the Bahamas, (laughs) just saying. (laughs) Lockdown has not been kind to me. It really hasn't. No, I've drunk my body weight in alcohol. Yeah. Well, I had Gemma on in the second show and she, Gemma Atkinson, is just this inspiration of how um, she's just so normal anyway, Gemma. She hasn't changed. (laughs) She is so normal. But she's just so very honest with it. And and I've got a book and I think I'll do some of the exercises and I open the book and I look at the pictures of the beautiful food and then I go, oh, and I get a glass of wine and I look at the pictures. And that's, that's oh, very yeah, so good at exercise. I she loved it though, hasn't she? She just when she made a change when she was in Hollyoaks and she just literally went from from that and she just she, that was it. Like, so much. And so it's much authentic as well. She's, she's not. Him. I don't think Gemma for one minute has sat and gone, "How do I make myself successful?" Oh, that's God, an authentic. No. I think I've seen some that have. I've seen some that have gone. Oh, this fitness thing seems to be working for women at the minute. I'll give that a try. And no, they've she, kind of gone down that route. She hasn't. She that she is Gemma. For herself. It was about 2006. I remember when I was working with her that we overlapped 2006, 2007. Gemma actually went from being what she felt was like that kind of like teenager, because she was younger than me, that teenager, sort of chubby teenager. And, and she took control of herself and she yeah. went away from the party lifestyle. And she yeah. was that even at that age and started doing exercise to the point where I was just like, you know, you're making me look bad. And that was how it was. And she stuck. You never get that though, ever, unless you're pregnant. Yeah, but she's always been, that's what I mean. She's been super fit from then. She made a conscious decision a long time ago. So what she's done now, it's like you wouldn't expect anything less from her. She was an athlete on Strictly. And yeah. like, and, and after having a baby, you wouldn't think anything less for her. I like, think the nice thing about Jem is that she's, she's just a normal woman. Yeah. So you relate yeah. to her. Yeah, because she'll have that. a pizza on a Friday night and she genuinely will. It's not just a pizza that she's ordered to take an Instagram picture of. She's frigging at it. <laughs> and the reason she decided to start doing the exercise was because she was fed up of moaning to people and she thought, I'm not going to be a drain on everyone. I'm going to be positive. And I'm going to, that's exactly, and that's how I saw it. I remember her saying it. So I don't want to drain the life out of everyone being unhappy. Let's be positive. 
And yeah. she made that decision. That's like 14 years ago. So yeah. I remember it. But yeah. have you se- have you seen who what I live with? So oh, okay. go on. I don't know what you live with. Have you not? Cat. So my fiance is insane. Like you couldn't get two more polar opposites. He is the most mental fitness person you've ever met he's like built like he's got like a 32 pack stomach you know so we've got we've got a gym like a fully equipped amazing gym in the garage how many times have you used it Tam? during lockdown (laughs) sorry don't even that oh yeah that (laughs) but but it's but you know what the really lovely 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 thing is is that he's the fittest person I've ever met in my entire life. But there's not one time he's ever turned around to me and said, "Oh come on, Tam, come on, you need to you know sort it out." Now I can sit there and eat a prawn cocktail when he won't blink an eyelid, and he he trains twice a day every single day without fail. Like his business is nootropics. That's what he does for a business. Um, but you couldn't get anyone more fit, and I'm still not not fit at all. But do you know what I think it is? This is this is my this is my thing. I think it's because I spent so many years in the West End being fit as a dancer that I've gone rah. I'm retiring. <laughs> I'm sticking with that. By the way, you do you have to have stamina to to be on the set, though. I know that sounds ridiculous, but the amount of hours that you work on Hollyo. You have to be able to keep up with that. You do. You do have to. It, it, they are long hours, and people don't realise as well. Like it's you're on your feet like the whole time. And also, did you, did you like, have heels on all the time, Gemma? Yeah, all all the time. And I remember like in the cold cold months, you're wearing stilettos, and your you, your feet hurt so much because the toe your toes are numb. That we used to get those little hand warmers and stick them in the bottom. Stick them in the bottom of the shoes. Yeah just to keep them going but you know we used to we do seven till seven like the hours is in 12 hour days and then what people don't realize is that then if you're doing seven consecutive days or whatever you having to learn the lines for the next day when you get home so you get home at like half seven takes like a couple of hours or whatever an hour to just to get them in and then you have your dinner and whatever and then get do it again and it's kind of retain release isn't it for the for the whole thing so it's kind of like a 24-hour job when you're doing it properly I think I'm really intrigued with you two because everybody that we've, or most people that we've had on have been on when kind of I've been there. So I've known them and I've known what their time has been like. What is it like on set at the moment? Like what is, it used, it, for me, it felt like a family, but that was before social it's, media and before no, all of. it is still like that. It's still so, well, I, I, I say that, but obviously I've been there for a while and but this, I think the thing with Hollyoaks that maybe none of the other soaps get is because we're single camera, the crew and the director and everyone is always on set with you. And I think that's what makes it very much a team effort. And then neither of you two have seen the new like artist village. Oh, I did see it once. I don't I think I came to visit and I saw it all, which was yeah, what is the crazy. hold on hold on explain to me and all of the people watching what is yeah. artist village so we have this thing at Hollyoaks called artist village so if you go to eastenders or emmerdale or coronation street you'll go into a bit where it's it's the the artist bit where they've all got their own dressing rooms there'll be a main green room um but pretty much they're all separated at Hollyoaks, we have what i can only describe as um butlins i suppose but it used to be just male and female didn't it hold on yeah when i was there you had a green room that's how it was like probably the size of my voiceover room and then you had a female changing room and and a male changing room and that was it that was it that's how it was that's how it was when i started right um and you've been upgraded now they've got a whole upgraded. Like, shed outside basically is what she's yeah, trying yeah. to say yeah they're like log cabins in a in a True. circle with a green room at one end but it 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 sounds ridiculous but it's actually kind of nice because we're all together and in each log cabin there's like so my my dressing room is, is obviously the best one 
Oh, here you go. Here's a, here's a good quiz. It's a competition. Here's a, here's a good quiz, right? Go on. Who do you think? So each dressing room's got four people in it. Yeah. Who do you think I'm in a dressing room with? Steph Waring. We'll all be female, yeah? Who did you say? Steph Waring. Steph Waring. Waring. All right, okay. Um, Jess. Who? Is she called Jess? Jess Fox. No, yeah. no. Yeah. Jess, I can't share a dressing room with Jess Fox. She's the tidiest person in the entire universe. She'll oh, yeah. kill me. Yeah. Um, Anna Passy. No, the same. Very tidy. They share a dressing room. Oh, so do you have a choice? These people have to choose to be with you. <laughs> Then it's completely different, Tam. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that did, yeah. Did oh, you really choose fine, the... though. I, d I wasn't, like, last on the list. It's like when you get picked for rounders and it's like... You're no! <laughs> <laughs> always happened to me. It always happened to me. Me. On, who... So it's me, Steph Waring, Jen Metcalf, and Nadine, who obviously went off to have a baby so she's not back yet but yeah me and Steph and Jen Metcalf and when we first got these dressing rooms the, uh, this is you all over you would have done this Jen so when we first got these dressing rooms they're obviously they're outside so the the door of the dressing room is outside I can't it's like big brother a little bit you know with the grass patch in the middle and so they kind of look like little miniature houses. So I, being me, went to the shops and bought doorbell, <laughs> doorbell, no, aunts, no, you didn't, a rack of gnomes, a garden fence. <laughs> yeah, true story. That's epic. I don't expect anything less. That's just brilliant. Jess Fox and Anna Passy have got window boxes that are growing herbs. Yeah, but they don't have gnomes. No, they no, They don't no. have gnomes. I have giant gnomes, and I've got one gnome that's pulling a no moony. <laughs> Speaking of going to shops and buying presents, what was your... Oh, um, God. Yeah, 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 we're going there. It's that time in the evening. What was your leaving present, Gemma, from the crew? Oh, my God, I dread to think. Well, see if you can guess, Tam, what would her leaving present yeah. from the crew be? Is it clothing? N no. <laughs> you can definitely wear it. Kind of. Go, it... go, like, go, you know that thought oh, well. you don't want to have, Tam, go there. Is it some kind of edible thong or something? No, go further, further than that. <laughs> Is it, oh God, is it, can I, is it like it was, a toy of some it description? Was quite yeah, 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 quite rapid. Rapid. Is it a, a very large it, toy? I want to just say, I'm happy for this to be said, but I didn't use it just so we know, you know, if anybody yeah, yeah. wants any, like dirty things or thoughts or is whatever. It, is yeah. it like a dildo covered in like diamonds no, or something? It's an extra large <laughs> dildo. I had, a, I had a, a Claren set of lovely makeup and everything, which I'd done a collection for, but it was a rather large, large dildo, and the boys found it really, really funny. Because I was always the mates with the guys, and I was always mates with the girls. I came out of like a six year relationship before I got in Hollyoaks, and I was just like, I wanted just to concentrate on my work. So I was just everyone's mate. I certainly didn't have. I was always like the lads and I talk about sex, I'm quite open and stuff and I don't care, but I never really did anything about it. So when I left after three years, they were like, here's a present. If we can't sort you out, then here you go. <laughs> if we can't please you, Absolutely this was, not the, was the message, was it not? Was that? If we can't please you, this might. Yeah, exactly. If we can't please you, then yeah, exactly. Then this might, here you go. And it was in, it was in a card and it was at the... Um, What's the pub that's on the corner? The Chilwell Abbey pub. Chilwell yeah. Abbey. Garden. Chilwell Abbey pub has had so much press from this show, to be honest. <laughs> and it was in the garden. And you know what? It was like 70% of the people that were there and chipped in were crew members. And that's the thing. It's just like, you know, that's what it was, that was just what it was all about. And it's just, it's just funny. It's just... But it's it, still the same now. If I'm like, you know, if I'm going down to see you... But I say, and I say it on set, it'll be all the crew members that go, oh, my God, please say us, Gemma, you know, Colin especially. Oh. Oh. And he was always someone because he was, like, quite Sergeant Major Colin. Yeah, yeah. Sergeant Sergeant he, would say, Major. he tells me off all the time, but he says exactly, exactly this. He goes, you and Gemma are exactly the same. You're an absolute nightmare, but I love you to bits. And but you pull it out of the bag. Oh. 
as soon as we're told we just need a bit of authority, we just want someone with a bit of a twitch, and we're like, yeah, yeah. No. all right, yeah, exactly. I'll do. Fine. Yeah, yeah, no worries. What do you need from me, Colin? Okay, yeah, that's I'm there. <laughs> that sounds so wrong, it's Gemma. So I'm, I'm going to save you from this moment. Um, so, Gemma, you, you obviously you spoke about being a mum, and that's your kind of the thing that you're doing. But you are you going to act again? Is that something that you would want to do? I know you mentioned that you quite fancied directing, which I think you would be brilliant <gasps> at. Oh my god, you are yeah. amazing at directing. You should I think never that would... come in oh, and direct I... Hollyoaks. Yeah, why don't you just get on? Because I know Matt Littler said. Oh that my god, Brian would have you here as a director in a flash. I know he would. Go and be a 100%. trainee director at Hollyoaks. You but know the show. show. When the kids go to school in September, well, do you let start school? I don't want to be, you know, everyone starts asking, well, what are you doing now? You know, at least I've had, I've had the kids as an excuse for like the last four years. Which is <laughs> They're brilliant. not an excuse. You've brought up two beautiful little girls. You yeah, really have. Not much work's coming either, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? So it's either just go, oh, yeah, I've turned down that, that, and that, and that. But no, not really. You know, there's obviously like, there's a lot of theatre productions and like tours I could have been doing, and that's what I was doing before, and that was my bread and butter. But yeah, no, I've decided. I've decided in sort of September. I want to start. I'm going to looking into doing a director's course so I can just get do, a whole... do a short film with us in it. Oh my god, it'd be amazing. But I'm not a writer, so I'm not somebody. Somebody come with me to me with a short film and on a script. Mike's and a writer. Mike's a writer. He just, he just and I would bring it. Boom! Here we go. We've got there it. Go. Here's a short film. Right all, one. All dads that trained as an electrician. Mike yep. likes to write. We've got it. it. We acting it. You direct it. Done. Bosh. But I just need to learn. I do know about the lines and going over and different things and, and, and like crossing the line and stuff like that. You know what, though? Do you know Inter what, Gemma? Interestingly enough, at Hollyoaks recently, we've we've had directors that are new directors that don't know any of that stuff that have come in to, simply to direct a scene, and they've had the DOP do all the rest of the technical stuff. So I think you just I know how much you do know from being. From, so I coach now, I coach actors, I've been coaching actors for like 13 years and I'm surprised at how much of behind the scenes stuff yeah. and, the, and the kind of the crossing the lines and all of that. You oh, I still don't understand the lines. Realize without actually knowing that you know it. Well, so I, I think, think I'd like to get some... Set, and I'll, you've just crossed the line and you, like and you get, better know it. I said I would like to get some kind of qualification under my belt though to kind of be able to go and say this is what I am doing. But and I, it's like... Yeah. I don't know. Is a directing qualification the same as an acting qualification? No, but I've looked in. I've looked into it, and so a director's qualification it says that if you want to do a master's or you want to do these certain film courses, then you have to have this degree and that degree and that degree. But then in the brackets at the bottom it says, but also you. It depends on experience, and all these qualifications can be wavered if we feel that you have had yeah. this much experience in and the industry. And you know how to be an electrician. Her yeah. Her. Yeah, do you know what? You could be the director and there's always a spark at the end of the day that if you're running over, we'll pull the plug. You yeah. could be the director that goes, you can't pull the plug because I'm a spark. I'll just put it back in. I'll just put it back in. But you know what? That whole thing, Kelly, is like, actually, it's just exactly what I'm saying. It's like when my kids start going to go back to school, rather than waiting for somebody to give me a job, I want to be proactive yeah. in my way and I want to show my children how I feel and it's not about that it's moving with the times and if I can be paid you know a hundred pound a day or you know 150 quid a day for five days a week to do to, you know do an amateur film or to be you know somebody would actually I'd be appealing to somebody to pay me to direct their things it's, way, it, it's, it's way more than that by the way I think you should use there's apprenticeship schemes at Hollyoaks for directors absolutely give them a ring get on it I am getting on it. Soon yeah, she's like that. Friday, she, you're you're going to be like, there. Excuse me. Listen, right. Honestly, I think but you know, like when I did my stories for my girls, like I've done that, and I, I will film like two minutes of them doing stuff or whatever, and I'll edit it in a way I like to think that I edit it in a way that might be slightly comical, or you know, I cut this bit out. Or bit, you entertain you know me. You know what I do, Gemma? I'd go and do work experience at Hollyoaks for free, two weeks. Well, for I would free. do that. But I want to just, I want to have. I would like to know a bit more, but then I suppose maybe they'll You'll learn more on the job than you will start in a frigging classroom. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good advice, and it will and it will save me money as well. There you go. Maybe you can stay with me. Yeah. Oh, there you okay. go. Tam, can you All make this happen? Can you can you get me a can you get me an apprenticeship offer? And then I yeah, can... we just made something up. I leave my husband I'm and the kids for just a couple of weeks. Only a couple of weeks. I, I love them I'm so much. I could I'm just. Take, I'm on it. How do you describe your Hollyoaks journey, Gemma, in three words? Oh my goodness, that's really okay. So. Um, life-changing 
Are you having that as one word? Is yeah, that, word that is one word. Hyphenated. Yeah. 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 Hyphen. yeah, okay. Do you want yeah. me to do this or not, Kelly? Or would you like to, you know, uh, if, if, if we're going to go, if we're going to go there, then I'll just give you one word and then that's it. That, was, what, very, that was very teacher-like, Gemma. Was I'm it? Gonna, it was very teacher-like. Is that one word, Gemma? Is it? Now, now I've got time to think about it. It was the whole point of that question. Okay. Was, okay, we're just saying three words. How do you feel about it? Go, Gemma, go. Yeah, and go on. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Interrupt me. You're right, Tam. That was my teacher mode. Like, that was my mum mode. mode. That was like... That was like homeschooling a nine-year-old that doesn't do his frigging work. <laughs> that is probably me and Gemma summed up to a T, to be fair. <laughs> Go on. Three words, a sentence, a paragraph, whatever you want, Gemma. Life-changing. Um, she's pure happiness and absolutely inspirational and just made me complete. I won an award. This is my paragraph now. I won an award and I did that and I was able to... Where's the award? My he, it was the first award as well, though. It was the first right. ever public yeah, voted it award. Immediately. We need, to, we need to get okay. this. It wasn't just an award. It was a pretty substantial award. So, and my dad, and I'll tell you a story. So my dad, this, it, like my dad, when I was young, I was on EastEnders from the age of nine till I was 15. And between the ages of 15 to 23, when I got Hollyoaks, my dad, there was a woman that was in Black Beauty. I don't even know who's the, actor's, the actress's name. But my dad, she lived in Surrey. And my dad said, he went round to her house. This was before I was in EastEnders. So this was probably like, like mid-80s. And he said that she was the woman from Black Beauty. And he went round there and he knew her as like a 50-year-old woman. She was the child. And that was her uh, picture on her mantelpiece. And he said to me, I don't want you to be that person, my dear. I don't want you to be that person. And I was like, well, I know, Dad. That's why I'm training as an electrician. I'm trying to clean toilets. And I was a bra measurer. And I was a waitress at Colicchio's. And I'm doing all this stuff. And when I got Hollyoaks and when I won the award, even though my dad, he loves my husband now, so we get on fine. But we've had a bit of a fractured relationship through my mum and dad's breakup and stuff. He was like, when I won my Hollyoaks award, if a viewers voted, I rung him. He, any other, and I, he was the first person I called. And he said... I, I, he said I, I didn't think you'd get it because you didn't because EastEnders and Coronation Street had 14 million viewers each they won awards that were viewers voted we got the, the sort of kind of consolation prize and the panel voted awards but actually it was even though Hollyoaks only had 3 million viewers rather than 14 there were so many people that had that much passion that I had to vote that they were the younger people that would vote so say like there was like 1 million votes for that award like 70% of it was from Hollyoaks fans because it was we were together at the Soap Awards weren't we when Hollyoaks won their first best soap mm, yes we were yes we were yes we were yeah that's exactly right that was oh yeah that was like in 2013 or 14 you know anyway just hold this thought you carry on talking I'm just gonna go yeah I won the award so Sam oh, what's yeah. your three words your Hollyoaks journey because you're still on your journey uh, brilliant. three words three words um um First word would be um, uh, learning. I, I've learned more than I ever learned in 15 years of being in the West End on Hollyoaks. My second word would be friendship. I've gained friendships on this that I never got before, as Gemma being the biggest one of all. Um, and three would be be a passion it's my passion now i'm i'm happy there and i want to stay there and i'm, I'm passionate about what it is now and then one question for me just because i want to know what one. would be your dream west end role oh if you, if you were going to do it what would it be film at chicago really? i'm desperate oh you could do that that'd be amazing i'd love I to say I would definitely want to be want to be Villanelle. We're talking about oh the West God. End, though. You did the musical version oh of Villanelle. I can't. And Roxy, you and me, bam. Yeah. That'd be amazing. We're both filmers, though. Yeah, you've not. Got, neither of you are a Roxy. So are you ready for it? Yeah. Come on, let's see the award. Oh shit! Hang on. <laughs> don't, don't break it. <laughs> it. It's a bit top heavy, isn't it? Amazing. Where do you actually put it? You yes, it, yeah. room. it's in my living room. Yeah, that's amazing. You should be so proud of that. You should be very proud of that. I'm, I'm gagging for one of them. 
You will get say, one of them. I hope I can follow you. You but will all, get one of them. Seriousness. This is what I mean. It's like, I know it sounds really cheesy and stupid, but I, I've done what I've wanted to do and achieve for my adult, for my acting life. And it's not saying I was always oh, over, but I've, then I've done what I want with my kids and the whole thing with directing. It's just, I don't want to go back to a job. I know I work doing returns in my brother's company and he wants me to take over the account and do that. And I could be on a full-time wage, but I just know I won't be happy. And I don't need to be in front of a, of, of a camera. I don't want the recognition. I just want to be in that environment. I want to- Then we should make it happen. I, I yeah, wanna, I think you'd make a I wanna go director. To I want to go to sleep dreaming about the script I've been looking at. Like, Michael, if you're a writer, like, I, I can't write stuff, so I need raw material. Whatever it is, I will tell you if I don't like it. If I do like it, this is what you need to do. And if that's just me. And I will put my name to something, and I will... I, I, and I just want to be appreciated. I think, like, through my whole adolescent life, Hollyoaks was the only place where I really felt appreciated. And I felt like... I was, it just gave me, you know, it made me who I am. I was six years single on Hollyoaks and I'm with my husband now. We've been together like 10 years and he's a friend of my brother's and my dad always used to say, oh, um, you need to be a bit more ladylike. You know, you talk about that story about the present I got and I burp a lot and I'm, you know, and I said to my dad, I was like, well, if he doesn't know who I am, then I'm not going to do it. And he, he, I am more myself, probably more myself. So I had like Nick Pickard come to our wedding, James Sutton, who, Tam, we both went to James's wedding, didn't we? You know, and you saw met Christian. Oh my God. Tam, Tam, you stayed at our house, you know Christian. Like, he's just, he's he's, he's a big bear, like, as in not fat. But, but like, Christian looks at me like, oh God, now I've got two of them for a whole evening, <laughs> shit. But he's the cool, calm and collected one, but he just tells me as it is. He's just, you know, it, it's just what I need. But he sits there and, and my the only reason my dad wanted me around on Father's Day was because he I was bringing Christian. He was like, are you sure you're doing it? Are you doing it for yourself or me? And I'm like, no, no, well, Christian's coming. Oh, yeah, come around. Come around. <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> Do you know, I think it's lovely to see that, and we said at the very beginning of the show that you two are the very best of friends, but you really are. Like, the way you even, like, looking at She's each other. She's met, story. met my family. Like, no one at Hollyoaks has met any of the family that, that, that Jem has um, met, you know, and the most important people, and and vice versa and so you know what like I'll never let anyone say anything bad about Tam vice versa that same way round because it's like I'm not ever taking the piss we'll always have these little quirks and these little isms and these little kind of like bite backs to each other but it's never it's like I just want to it all I want is her happiness and that's what I want from all of my friendships and my own my own relationship too like if I want to go to Ibiza and go off with somebody else, I'll be the first one to tell my husband because I'm like, I'm ready to escape from motherhood. Yeah, but I would tell you to absolutely not because he's amazing and please don't ruin it. Mike, write that time code down. We're going to save Gemma's marriage. No, but say it. I don't, like, I don't even mind. Like, I'm kind of, I want people to know the real side of what what life is about. You know, every day I strive, it's not, it's about just being with your best friend. Like, I would never respect my, my best friends like how I would or how a man has treated me or how relationships can be. Just be with someone if you love them. If you don't, just be on your own. Like, yeah. you yeah. know, so many of my friends that have got kids have got really great lives because they're single parents, like co-parenting. This whole isolation has been great for them because they've had three days off a week. Fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my husband's worked full time and I have looked after the children 24 hours a day. Don't you know, know how I, you did that. I really don't know how you did that. It's really interesting because I speak to my friend quite a lot and she's she's by herself and she hasn't got, she's younger than me, she hasn't got any children, but she's alone in her flat. And we both have these conversations of, can I have your day for one day? And she's yeah. the same. She's like, please, can I come and look after your children for a day? And oh it's like... Oh my God, I'd love to go around to Gemma's and look after those girls. But yeah. So my brother's, uh, my husband's business part, business, brother, sorry, is his business partner. They work together, so they work constantly. And he's with one of my best friends. I got them together. She is a dance oh, I my love her. Friend. It's Hayley, you know Hayley. I love her. <laughs> and she's, she's amazing. amazing. She's the same. So she's been getting like sat down and depressed a bit because she is watching all these Netflix and she's wondering when he's coming home and this and this. I actually said that I've always been that person that I've never understood depression. Yeah, I've had sciatica. I know this is, uh, sounds really silly. I've had sciatica that when you can't see it, you don't know how, you, it's the most in, like kind of in, it, it just takes over you. It just literally just completely consumes you, but you can't see it. And depression, I've never had, but I've always been a little bit skeptical. But being in this environment with lockdown, you're like, 
I, I don't want to be anywhere else, yeah? If I could be in Mykonos or Ibiza or Vegas, I don't want to, with who? Like, if I'm yeah. going to be isolated, I want to be here. But at the same time, I want to fucking escape. I, I want to go. I want to go. I just want to get out. And but I don't want anyone else to look after my children. And it's, it's what it's because whatever whatever setup anyone's got at home, it's almost because we're in isolation. You've got that one setup consistently all of the time. Yeah. So whether you're alone all of the time, or whether you're looking after two kids all of the time, anything all of the time is is overwhelming. And I think, you know, that is difficult for anybody. That's the, that's the one thing I don't have to deal with, not having any kids. Yeah, but then, Tam, you've but, got Gigi and you've got and you've got um, your stepdaughter. And you have you not seen on this, this, this girl here is like created like her own McDonald's in lockdown. She painted <laughs> like chip well, I can do that because I and don't know how to her own so what I do, I can. And, and, and she was on roller skates, like pretending she was oh. in a Oh, my God. I did go on roller skates for That's an American amazing. diner night. Yeah, I did do that. That's got like so many cool points. Yeah, I get, I do get to be the cool step mum, you know, but I don't, I'm not with her all the time. So I do get to do that. You yeah, know, I can't, I don't have to do you know, all the rest of work, stuff. When this work's going on, Tam, it's like you're working all the time that you're never, You it's like you, you can't ever fulfil what you think you want to fulfil. And it's like the most beautiful thing I've seen through lockdown is you being appreciated with Gigi and with these, and with his daughter because actually all, it, you know, they're in lockdown together. And without yeah. this, this is what I'm saying. It's like it's brought so many people together. It's made you realise your your true your true worth as oh, as de it. Oh, definitely, a hundred percent. Lockdown's been brilliant for, and for time, us. As they a couple. Have time, or maybe they don't. You know, maybe I'm not enough, or I'm not this. Like you, if without you, they would have been absolutely crumbled. And it's just to see the empowerment that you've had. The and drama is what <laughs> it is. I bring the drama to it. <laughs> I think the thing is that if anyone is at home and feeling like you said they've had a tough time in lockdown, then just be kind to yourself. Yeah. It's difficult for everybody. And, and just because you think, oh, well, I've got a nice home and I've got a garden and I've got this and other people have got less than that. It doesn't make anyone's struggle any worse or any better. It's difficult yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Just be just kind to yourself and be kind to everybody else and wear your fucking face masks. Exactly. <laughs> Hashtag be kind, wear your face masks. Yeah, let's get it trending. Oh my god, my mum made me a face lovely. mask. It's the most thing it's the worst thing you've ever seen in your life. But I was saying, Juliet's got a teacher, like a goes to a little nursery, and she's got a teacher that we've been keeping in touch with via Zoom and whatever. And I actually follow her on Instagram, and she lives in a flat, a one bedroom flat, with her daughter who's seven and her partner. And I've I've got a, a love, like a lovely garden. If you look at my stories, I've got a park, which I must say we paid for before we even had children. Like we knew before we even bought this house. It's not about that, but the more like even the more my children have, the, the still they feel just as confined as if they were in a flat. And that's the yeah. thing that. To fear. it's so hard to be like oh I've got first world problems but actually going to a park went to a park yeah yesterday. exactly and sanitizer to the max but I did and my girls played for an hour and 45 minutes and they went to bed at quarter to seven yesterday and slept through for 12 hours because they were <laughs> mentally stimulated you know and it's just being able and that's what I was saying to so this teacher she did this chalk drawings it was like um jump on the spot here and then swell around drew it around and I did it on my Instagram and I copied it but I copied it from somebody who is a teacher that's in a one bedroom flat kind you know what I mean and it, yeah and and but because she was because she was at her outdoor space was a car park so it's interesting yeah. so I do that on my road and you know it doesn't matter where you come from or what you do we're all in the same position and that's just what you have to and the same with you Tam you're working full-time you don't have kids but we're all no matter how much you have and no matter how much you achieve and how much people think you're resilient everyone's human and it's fucking hard yeah, exactly. of course it is. But I think exactly. I think the thing to come out of it, hopefully, is that, that this people considering other people, and well, and we're great we're great cyclists in our family, and and hopefully more people will cycle because that's better for the environment rather than jumping in the car to go to the shop. Sam, I'm never going to get on a bike <laughs> ever. So my no, actually, to be fair, I did think about getting a bike, but I wanted to pink one with a basket in the front. And apparently, do you know what? Like, what um, brilliant bikes! And I've got two of them. And the only reason I've got two of them is because we've got like a caravan that's in like um, a town called Fleetwood, which is like the land that everybody forgot, but we love it. And there's nothing there, but it's by the sea. Is there anyone called Mac there that lives there? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, the, I really need a wee. Okay, Kendallton bike. 
the Pendleton bikes from I think Halfords, Victoria Pen- Pendleton did a bike. It's an upright shopper and it's freaking awesome. That's what I get one time. An upright In fact, shopper. let's just get her to send you one. Let's so my, it on my, my four-year-old I get myself an upright it. shopper. An upright shopper that you can put a baguette in the basket of. <laughs> my my four-year-old. <laughs> 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 We just have a chat and let's let these girls go off on one. I tell you what, it's just like you know. I thought like I talk- Mike's like that. At what point do I stop this show? Right. Well, let's stop the show and yeah. have a chat after I've had a yeah. wee. Go for it. Right. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining us. It has been brilliant. Um, we're pretending like we're going to leave now, but we're not. We're going to talk for probably another couple of hours. And, Love you. Uh, yes. You're not allowed to hear about. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Thanks very much for joining us, and we will see you next week at the Dog in the Pond. <laughs>